Yo, what's going on, good people? Uh, this is Smitty, and this is a tribute to the EA brand of uh, professional basketball. It's officially they they have officially killed themselves with this title. Now that being NBA Elite, but I'm here to pay respects to the games beforehand that honestly paved the way, you know what I'm saying, that paved its rise to before taking that incredibly deep fall. Um, a lot of people remember Lakers versus Celtics, you know what I mean, where you had the player individuality, you know what I'm saying, Very, you had Larry Bird doing his uh, three-point, he had his three-point shot, I think he had. Um, you had Michael Jordan that had his reverse layup and Charles Barkley doing the gorilla dunk, you know what I mean? And Tom Chambers doing his floating dunk, you know, he, you could nearly do it from the three-point line, you know what I mean? Uh, but this game, honestly, was revolutionary because it was the first true NBA title to really hit the scene, and it was it was a great game. You know, and through the years, it evolved from version to version, you know what I mean? Using Clyde the Glide and doing his patented glide dunk and, you know, like uh, Bulls versus Blazers. I remember using Tim Hardaway and his UTEP two-step, you know what I mean? So there, there was a lot of greatness within the games that they had. They Every year, they they would try and make it. Not not just graphical enhancements and gameplay enhancements, but also bring you some individuality, and I really love that. And then they pushed forward, and as the game progressed, they went into the live era, and you know, and they made some great games. And in spite of all the competition that they had around them, they had some serious games like back in that Nintendo, you know, uh, Genesis era. You know, and by far, you know, a lot of people remember Coach K college basketball. That game right there was the one of the best games to play because you could smash, you could uh, shatter backboards in that game. You know what I'm saying? Which was a completely unique thing. You know what I mean? And the game, yo, game was awesome. The game was absolutely awesome. You know, um, I had owned it back then. Uh, but yeah, that was a dynamic game. That was a must-have if you had a Sega Genesis or Super Nintendo. If it was on Super Nintendo, I'm not sure. But um, but yeah. But anyway, that just lets you know they had some quality games, um, some quality basketball games. Man. But as they move forward into the PlayStation, they had more competition. You know, with like NBA Shootout, um, in the zone. You know what I'm saying? But it still stood out. You know, NBA Live still stood out as a better title. And because they established their name, they established themselves for putting out such a quality game, you know, on the you know, within that PlayStation era, you know, that PlayStation Sega Saturn era. The, these games were awesome. You know, what I mean the, every year they kept bringing it better and better and better and giving you something more and more each time but then when uh the dreamcast dropped you know what i'm saying uh 9999 was the date when dreamcast came out and the following month because i know it didn't come out at release but the following month when nba 2k dropped that's when the changing of the guards started. Now, live was still the game, don't get me wrong. But you had to, especially if you were a sim head, you had to honestly give 2K a look because they started going more for that individuality. You know what I'm saying? That authenticity. They would do that. You know, like Allen Iverson was the cover man for a good number of years. And every single year, they. They put more emphasis on the crossover. And you know he had the most crisp crossover in the game. And they made an emphasis on the ball handling. They made it different for a center 
you know, they like their whole thing has been individuality every year. Whether it's a finesse center, a power forward, you know, a, a absolutely aggressive power center, you know what I'm saying, or traditional center, or forward, or guard, or shooting guard, any of the five positions. And the way, you know, like the way your player was rated, his skill set and animation set was all set accordingly. That's what made the game different from live, you know what I'm saying? And that's when live really started to take that hit. And that's when 2K rolls up to be the better game, but live was still there. And throughout the years, as you've seen, like as it as it progressed through the PlayStation era, live started to look more and more arcadish because they were losing their identity because they would get desperate. They didn't really know what to do. They they didn't know exactly what direction to take to to honestly compete with the 2K title. But then, once they got on to the next-gen console, 2K already had something solid and prominent to port over, you know, from onto, onto next-gen. And where, where Live has started anew. And even though their efforts, you know, it, it really came down to acquired taste. You know, some people liked, them, liked their games, but many others didn't. You know, and 2K really stood out as a prominent choice. But the fact of the matter is these dudes were competing, and they're trying to come to bring something together. Every year they would bring something different to the table to try and string together a quality, feasible product. And they finally truly got it. Like, they had something really close when it came to 08, 09, but really in 10... When Mike Wang was there, and they got that that fairy dusting from 2K, that really did it for them, and that really took the game up to a completely new height. But then September, that fateful day, a few days ago, that fateful date, September 22nd, 2010, the day that the demo was available. For MB, I mean for NBA Elite, so use for the public to download and play. That was doomsday for EA Sports for EA Basketball. That's where tragedy had struck when they released when they decided to release this title and honestly believed that it was a quality game. That absolutely tripped me out. So. Now you see this game and it looks absolutely terrible now. You know what I'm saying? So all I can really say is that these guys had a strong game all the way up to ten and all they needed to do was keep building upon ten and they could have worked on their real time physics engine in the background. They really could have. And then came out with it and have a prominent foundation upon releasing that that game. You know, but this game, the way it is, is absolutely terrible, and it's going to take, it's going to take this game some time to honestly try and resurrect itself from the, from the ashes, for real. Like, this game went down, for real. So, on that note, yo, this is your boy Smitty. And all I can say is, and all I can do is to sum it up all together as to what EA Sports has truly done with their basketball title. They have completely killed this franchise with this game, and they have completely sent this thing in a downward spiral and in peril with this title. In spite of the, the many little good things that it has, like the ball physics and the complete player control, this game has no individuality. Everyone has has the virtually everyone has the same skill set, you know, relative to the position. Like guards and forwards handle the ball the same way. Centers and you know, power forwards and centers have the exact same skills. So, you know. This this is terrible. No individuality outside of the jump, uh, outside of their shooting form. That's really it.
You know what I mean? But their shop mechanic is truly the only solid foundation they truly have to build off of. To me, that's what it, that really is what it is because there's no true player individuality in this. So, like I said, I'm signing out now, but one word truly sums up what EA has truly done to themselves. Mm-hmm.